It's probably no surprise that Donald Trump has been the subject of over 2,100 CNN reports since he announced his candidacy for president on June 16th. Uh, okay, maybe 2,100 is a little bit surprising. But the basic calculus is something I think everyone cynically understands. Trump gets ratings, the news carries Trump. A little less obvious is that Trump's high poll numbers are actually a result of his outsized coverage in the media. Political science professor John Sy has produced a number of handy graphs that show the correlation between Trump's share of coverage versus his poll numbers, and it's pretty conclusive. What's more, if you graph all the GOP candidates' polling numbers versus their share of coverage, you get a correlation of 0.96, as close to a straight line as I've ever seen. Of course, you could say causation moves the other way here, that poll numbers drive coverage. And in some way, they do. Only news coverage usually comes first. People hear a lot about a candidate, research that candidate, identify in the same way that you do when you hear a pop song on the radio over and over and over again. I can feel my face when I'm with you. And that exposure ultimately means they're more likely to give that name to pollsters. The news then reports more on the top candidates, which means even more coverage, which means even higher polling, and it becomes a cycle that perpetuates itself. Until the top dog makes a mistake. It's three agencies of government when I get there that are gone. Commerce, education, and the, uh, uh, what's the third one there? Let's see. <laughs> or a new fresh face steals some attention away. I think women all over this country heard very clearly what Mr. Trump said. The problem is that Trump's mistakes are often so inflammatory and news making that they work to his advantage. And new fresh faces are the ones that Trump attacks the hardest. If you listen to her for more than five minutes straight, you get a headache. 2100 news stories later, and here we are. We know why the news works like this. Less ratings mean less ad revenue, means less profit, means lower stock prices, means fewer investors, means layoffs. You're fired. In America, indeed in the global economy, everything always has to grow. The news, especially cable news, has a vague interest in keeping its dependence on capitalist incentives under wraps. Even though everyone knows that ratings to a large part determine the news, news organizations have to tout their journalistic integrity, even if it's only a formality. And this might just be the gift that Donald Trump is giving to all of us. More than anything I can remember, the Trump phenomenon strips away the false righteousness of the news media. When Trump does something outrageous, CNN doesn't cover it by choice, but because they are forced to do so. The Trump phenomenon strips away the false righteousness of politicians, too. Trump has co-opted political language and employed it to such a ridiculous and shameless degree that its emptiness is laid totally bare. And lastly, Trump strips away the false righteousness of us, the American public. The second GOP debate was the highest rated program in the history of CNN. CNN is forced to cover Trump because we force them to. Why when we put on you know, something with Jeb Bush talking about the economy or Scott Walker talking about labor unions, why doesn't anybody watch that? It's in our nature to gravitate toward confirmation bias and sensationalism. It takes a force of will to consume media that may be boring, but crucial for making intelligent political choices. And in large part, it's a mental muscle that most of us, myself often included, don't want to exercise. Donald Trump exists at the nexus of all these things, and his invocation of all three is, I think, an important lesson. The news media, politicians, and the general public are all responsible for the existence of Donald Trump. And no one of these things is going to change drastically overnight. But if all of them move just a little bit in the right direction toward integrity, honesty, and engagement, respectively, the difference could be substantial. We know that the news media is biased and politicians talk bullshit. And the news and the politicians know we know it. Still, they go through the formalities. It is exactly formalities like this that can keep a system alive longer than it needs to be. So maybe we need someone like Donald Trump to pull down that last layer of credibility. How are you gonna create jobs in this country? I'm just gonna do it. 
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, we are at about $950 on the Patreon, which is $50 away from the big goal of $1,000 um, that starts to make this financially feasible for me. So if you like the Nerd Rider, you, this is something you don't think you're seeing somewhere else on YouTube or the internet, pledge a little bit of money to the project um, and we can do a lot of more stuff. Um, there's no more stickers or mugs left, but I want to order some more swag, maybe some more mugs. Uh, but I'd like to hear what you would like of Nerd Rider swag in that universe. So let me know in the comments um, and we'll, we'll get some and put them up. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next Wednesday.